Hey, welcome to Pusher TV. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install our heavy duty upper coolant tube assembly for the 2011 to current 6.7 Power Stroke equipped Super Duty trucks. They've been the same since their inception in 2011 all the way till now, which is late 2022. So this video will cover them all. The first thing I always do before I start to install is I verify I have everything I need to do it. And so all of our products come with full instructions with a parts list on the very first page. I've gone down that parts list. I've verified I have everything. So I'm ready to get started. So first step is obviously gonna to be to drain coolant because we're working on the coolant system. I've already done that. It takes about 10 minutes to drain the coolant out of the petcock that's on the main radiator here. It's actually on the lower driver's side corner. Open that, you would throw a five gallon bucket underneath there, fits no problem. Take your cap off your coolant bottle there and drain about two gallons or so. We're working on basically the highest part of the coolant system so you don't have to drain that much. The, your truck is older, it's been a while since the coolant flush or a thermostat swap, it's a great time to do that, I recommend it. So to get started with the rest of it, we're gonna remove our upper coolant tube here. It's just held on with this C-clip right here on the um, radiator inlet, and it can be held in that open position if you want, or you can just pull it off because we're gonna use that in our adapter later. And then over here on your thermostat, there's actually another one. It's pretty much impossible to see on camera, but it's oriented at the bottom of this 90 here with your little loop facing that way. So you just need to get up underneath there with a the screwdriver, grab that loop, and just pull it forward. Once that's done, you'll see we'll be able to just pull the hose right off. One little extra step I like to take is try to get as much coolant out of the thermostat housing as possible prior to taking it off. So I take a paper towel and shove it down in there with a screwdriver and just move it all around. And there's really probably less than a teaspoon of coolant left in there. But if you go to remove the housing with it in there, it's going to fall out on the motor. And later on, if you think you have a leak, it'll, you'll be questioning yourself whether it's from that or whatever. So by doing this, I start with a totally dry um, engine. And then later, if I see any wetness around my thermostat housing, then I'm pretty confident I have a leak. So as you can see, there's not much in there, but it's just nice to get that last little bit out. All right, now I just need to remove the three bolts that hold the thermostat housing on. So a quick note, I always try to use the bubble wrap that my parts came in as a cushion. I lay it out on the bench and it keeps all my parts from getting banged up on the bench top. The first step to our installation process is going to be putting our X-ring in the groove of the radiator adapter, which is down inside there. And so really the only thing you have to watch out for is not getting the X-ring twisted in the groove once it's installed. So you can see the two nubs of my X-ring are visible the whole way around and it's not twisted. And then next, we need to install that clip we saved and so this adapter has a groove between the two slots on one side. You can see the other side does not have that groove. And so our clip is gonna go in the groove and then it'll sit down in that slot. And this is going to be the top side of your radiator adapter. And then lastly, we're gonna throw a little silicone spray on the O-ring, which is just gonna help it slide on the radiator really easily. Now it's gonna slide this on the radiator inlet. You can see I have a little notch in the radiator adapter. It's gonna slide over this ridge on the radiator. I'm gonna try to do this slowly so you can see the C-clip expand. And so now you can tell, you can try to pull it back. You can tell that it's seated inside the groove of the radiator. So I've looked at my thermostat. It's in great shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my thermostat housing. I'm reusing the bolts from the factory one of the two long ones here on the passenger side short one on the driver's side. You just lower that guy down in there. And tighten the bolts. I'm also gonna pre-position a one T-bolt clamp if you have our power flow intake manifold and turbo inlet, the best way for this lower T-bolt to be oriented is about like this. 
you'll be able to come underneath the turbo inlet and get to it with a long extension. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that guy in place like that. Now I'm gonna set my silicone couplers in place. I'm gonna put the one with the slight bend over here on the radiator. It's gonna actually kind of curve slightly up and over towards the passenger side. And that's gonna give you a little extra room for aftermarket intercoolers here. Then I'm gonna take the 90. I'm just gonna put one leg. It's an equal leg 90, so it doesn't really matter which leg you put on the thermostat housing. And I'm just gonna push that down on the thermostat housing. And it's just gonna kind of angle over towards your radiator inlet. Now we get to put in our upper coolant tube. It's gonna go underneath your vacuum line and small di diameter coolant line there. I'm gonna put our long straight leg into our 90 at the thermostat housing. And then we're just gonna line up the shorter end here with our radiator inlet. Quick note, I use silicone spray on everything. It just helps everything adjust super easily. I put it on these couplers and the tube. This allows me the ability to just move everything around and get it perfect. Now that I have that where I want it, I can just go place all of my clamps. I'm gonna have these two T-bolt clamps with the bolts underneath pointing that direction. And then I'll place this one here pointing vertically so I can get to it and they'll all be kind of nice and clean and hidden. All right, so that wraps up our install portion. The only thing left is to add coolant back into the system or put new coolant in. Um, you're gonna have a little more that was gonna fit if you just add what you drain back in, but that's fine. It'll probably be less than a quart. As soon as your thermostat cycles for the first time, it'll draw that in because there'll be a little bit of air trapped underneath it. And then you can just add the remainder of the coolant in there. Make sure to go over everything. Make sure if you unplug something or whatnot, you've gone over and checked everything you may have touched. You can see I just kind of tucked my coolant line there until this truck gets our coolant reroute. But this thing is looking really good. We've basically addressed pretty much all of our failure uh, issues up here on the top of the engine. If you have any questions or concerns that this video doesn't address, check out the site. We always add stuff, continually add FAQs, things like that. If you can't find the answer there, we're here for you. Give us a call, shoot us an email. And thanks for watching.